Cousino WSB refugee was great to watch you live during the hearing. What was your first reaction to find out about the editing done to the hearing upon release by the media? Well first, thanks to the Redditor who spotted it and brought it to everyone's attention. I wasn't surprised. As I said in a press release we put out on this, CNBC is one-sided pro-Citadel and most of Wall ST. We did find it odd that they would do it to a video of a congressional hearing but they know their audience and don't like to offend slash disappoint big finance. Bungwater 29 one day ago so, we may have hugged your website to death. That's awesome. I hope you signed up for our newsletter, followed us on Twitter slash FB and stay in touch with us and the issues. J underscore underscore Walla why is the SEC just letting Citadel and friends crash the market? They made a shitty bet and just refused to give up. Why aren't they being held accountable for their poor choices? The biggest problem with the citadels of the world is that they are unregulated in critical respects and are allowed to operate with little transparency, oversight, or accountability. For example, it should be subject at least to Reg Psi, but is not and the SEC had so far refused to apply Reg Psi to many market participants that it should be applied to. Citadel is also at the core of the fragmentation of our markets, which operates to the disadvantage of retail investors, buy side, and the financial system. Hopefully with the new leadership coming soon some of that will change. Jane Doi what new leadership is coming in? To the SEC? Biden's almost confirmed new head of the SEC is Gary Gensler, who was a fantastic when he headed up the CFTC. We hope he's going to reinvigorate the SEC, prioritize retail investors and market protection. We're going to be pushing him to do so and we'll be posting here in the future to keep you informed and maybe enlist your help in the rulemaking process to push back on Wall Street where it hurts, when they are trying to bend the rules to help themselves by screwing retail. J underscore underscore Walla thanks for your time. So basically they're just going to continue to fuck over the whole market until this thing blows up. Well. Hopefully when this is over, they put rules in place that prevents this from happening again. Countersteins you are the man. Ah Jaja Jaja thanks for everything and the best response in the congressional hearing. Lots of respect. Thank you. Remember, if you like what we have to say and you want to support an independent voice that stands up to Wall ST and Big Finance, go to our website, sign up for the newsletter, follow us on Twitter slash FB and, if you really want to help, donate, we exist solely due to financial support from people like you and others, which is why we are independent and can say what we say www.bettermarkets.com Toyo Chris I've donated only had USA and Canada as an option on billing information though. Reddit saved the gorillas now it's time to save the markets. Great point. Merkelig that's insane. Could Congress do something about it? Removing an important part of a hearing is bad. Right? Not likely anything can be done. Just call them out publicly. But one-sided support for the industry is what they do. Legals thank you for doing this Mr. Kelleher, I'm sure I speak for everyone when I say we appreciate your time. Some questions I think this board is interested in, of course if any put you in a sticky situation please ignore and of course please correct me if I am wrong. Do you believe order routing, especially with it being incentivized by payment for order flow, via dark pools has any impact on the fair public share price of stocks? PFOF totally distorts the order routing process and screws retail investors slash buy side, while harming transparent public markets. It should be banned along with the other secret payments that create undisclosed conflicts of interest and are not in the best interests of investors. Plus, so-called price improvement based on the NBBO is misleading if not a fraud. How easy is it for market makers to reset their failure to deliver obligations and in what ways can they do this? The FTD in this is inexplicable based on the public information, but it has all the hallmarks of abusive behavior and hopefully this is part of the SEC investigation, which they said they would publicly report on when done. As I noted in my written testimony, we also believe the SEC should review Reg Show and its others' rules and ensure that there are appropriate sanctions for violations, especially for those who repeatedly and perhaps strategically fail to deliver. And, as we have stated repeatedly, those actions must be against individuals and not just companies, otherwise they will keep doing it and letting the firms pay the fines. What does bona fide market making actually entail that allows market makers the extension to T plus 6 for an FTD as opposed to others who have T plus 3? Do you think this should be more heavily enforced? My research indicates FTDs drawn from naked shorts, based solely on a reasonable belief a share can be purchased, do not carry any borrow fee. Do you think the implementation of one would prove to be enough of a disincentive for this practice to no longer be used as a strategy rather than genuine FTDs? Do you think the reasonable belief aspect of this rule should be taken away as Europe and other markets have implemented, 
and do you think this equates to a fairer market? The alleged benefit of liquidity just does not seem to stack with the risk of shorting above the float and potential price manipulation as this board well knows. Yes. Reasonable belief is far too permissive and, too often, no standard at all. What is your opinion on dark pools generally? To me the lack of oversight seems ripe for the use of strategies which do not favor the retail investor. Frankly, anything called dark pool should be a red flag for not only lack of transparency, but also lack of oversight and accountability. It's just asking for trouble. Rather than allowing alternative trading venues, the SEC simply must focus on making our public, transparent markets robust and fair. That's where there's greatest investor protection and oversight, which reduces predatory conduct. That's not to say our public markets are perfect, they are not, but they are way better than the conflict-ridden dark markets. I don't dislike Aranji's band from WSB thanks for doing this. Do you have an opinion on the real SI of the stock vs reported and how can we improve transparency in the markets? Shorting needs much greater transparency. We have called for more transparency as to, 1, timing slash frequency, i.e., weekly if not more often, 2, everyone doing it regardless of form, i.e., not just hedge funds, and, 3, all products used to short, i.e., synthetic exposure. The markets and market participants should know a lot more a lot faster to level the playing field. Zero WL Exterminator Why Mr. Kelleher and thank you for doing this. My question is somewhat simple, I expect many others will already ask about the irregular massive buy orders that have popped up for GME in the past three days so won't cover that. My question regards the obfuscation of data when it comes to short interest. In your view, how conceivable slash possible is it for entities to hide the truth of short interest slash their short positions in a given stock? How feasible would it be, if one had little regard for the law, for entities with large short positions to report far smaller ones? For 10 years the SEC has failed to stand up a reporting regime for equity derivatives where, undoubtedly, many funds have taken short positions that are not disclosed to the broader market. We have repeatedly called for much greater disclosure of short interest regardless of form or firm. See my earlier answer as well. M4NOB Why was the hearing so focused on payment for order flow and other topics when there is insane market manipulation and illegal tactics going on? Agree. The focus on PFOF was because of the $680 million in PFOF Robinhood received in 2020 alone for selling its retail orders to dealers in the dark markets like Citadel. This inevitably creates conflicts of interest where retail traders get ripped off in rigged markets. But you are right that there are a lot of other issues, some of which we called for investigations by the SEC and DOJ into the conduct of all the financial firms here. We also addressed a number of other issues in our written testimony including market manipulation, capital and liquidity, the need for CAT, etc., and it's why we called for a series of congressional hearings. Thankfully, HFSC Chair Maxine Waters is doing that and standing up to the power, might and influence of Wall Street. JSMAR18 Innovative Analysation Ape What's your opinion on hidden orders and how HFT traders benefit from them to manipulate prices? What's your opinion on exchanges offering order types that retail cannot access and how this perpetuates inequality within the stock market disenfranchising retail investors? The concentrated trading largely through seven HFTs allows those firms to extract multiple forms of special privileges, all of which distort the markets and hurt retail investors. HFT has created rigged markets for the purpose of wealth extraction, which is enabled due to fragmented, dark markets with little regulation. If the SEC took its responsibility to protect investors and markets, it would have ended this long ago. Unfortunately, apart from lacking the courage to do it, the SEC doesn't even have the tools to monitor the markets today. They don't know half of what the HFT and Citadels of the world know. That's why they must complete the Consolidated Audit Trail, CAT, ASAP and start going after predatory behavior like preferential data access and other unfair privileges including stopping the approve of special order types that serve no purpose other than market manipulation and entrenching HFTs. Anthony Michael Saul was great to watch you in the hearing. What is stopping the SEC or DTCC from forcing a cover at this point? It seems we're making progress, but don't they understand the risk to the rest of the markets? Why the delay? No need if they regulators require transparency and impose certain operational requirements, like not repeated FTDs, so the markets can see what's going on and decide for themselves, inform and empower markets is always our first choice, if after that, there are still problems, misconduct or illegal behavior, then regulators, who should be monitoring the markets all along, see answer recat, can decide to take further action. Dusty CSK1 This is the way SEC must enact. 
Cat. The Flying Elbow First of all thank you so much for your time and how you presented the facts during the hearing with little bias. My question is, when the SEC isn't doing its job policing the market from illegal activities what can we the people do to bring attention to these issues? Does the SEC have formal filings we can complete and contribute to, or should we be contacting their members on Twitter to make sure action is taken? First and foremost, we need whistleblowers to come forward and report illegal conduct to the SEC. We included special provisions for this in the Dodd-Frank Act which has resulted in whistleblowers being awarded billions of dollars. Unfortunately, Trump's SEC enacted a rule to weaken this program because Wall Street and corporate America hates it, in addition, people can report wrongdoing to the SEC directly here. Jim Bob Icus Wen Moon? Soon Moon Hai, thanks for doing this AMA. My questions revolve around the narratives that large players in the market seem to make. Jim Cramer outlined how this would be done in the widely shared video from quite some time ago and we appear to have seen this playbook used with GME. Many of us have seen extremely suspicious stories about price drops, and the direction of the company. This would be seen as normal if we weren't paying such rapt attention to the ongoing saga. Does regulation exist to prevent collusion between the various players and media pushing their agenda for particular stocks, and is it tight enough to have a reasonable chance of enforcement? If not, is there a path to such regulation that could disentangle media from specific market interests? One narrative that has been seen is how Reddit retail investors are colluding and breaking the laws while we see what appears to be blatant disregard for those same laws as well as others by these accusers. Do you think that retail investors are breaking the law and is there a functional mechanism to expose and stop not only Citadel but others from engaging in these activities? In your opinion, how does retail investors research or DD, due diligence, compare to professional and insider analysts? We have seen retail painted as everything from morons and criminals to hyper-rational predators. Sorry if these questions are too long-winded, I appreciate you taking your time to answer any or all of them. It's unfortunate but the media is like a beast that has to always be fed and the financial industry is an expert at feeding the media the content that they want. Of course, it helps that the financial industry is also a major source of ad revenue for the media, which not surprisingly provides very good slash favorable coverage of their advertisers. The result is that the reporting is way too often one-sided, as I mentioned earlier regarding CNBC and Citadel and I stated in my press release on the video. In fairness, they are not all like that and we have received a lot of good coverage over the years and there are a lot of very good reporters slash editors slash producers who would like to have more balance, but the system is, sorry to repeat myself, rigged and effectively bought to cater to the advertisers, I could give some specific examples, but then even more outlets would reduce their coverage of us. You're also right about what frequently appears to be collusion and manipulation. This again gets back to, frankly, really bad regulators. For years now, the SEC, DOJ and other regulators slash prosecutors have simply failed to enforce the law without fear or favor. They are mostly former and future white-collar defense lawyers who not surprisingly don't go after their past and future corporate clients. Even when they do, they almost always only find the company and let the officers and executives who pocket literally hundreds of millions of dollars get off. That has to change before our markets get cleaned up and retail investors and the buy side generally gets protected. Complex Econ WSB Refugee My question is simple, could they ever be held accountable for their illegal shorting and everything else? Yes. If we had courage and leadership at the SEC and DOJ who were really willing to go after the rich, powerful, politically connected firms and executives. Hopefully, we'll see some of that in the coming years. We keep pushing for this, but Congress has to push as well which is why my suggestion earlier about you contacting your House and Senate representatives is so important. They all respond to public pressure and people power can have an impact, but people must use their power to counterbalance the influence of Wall ST and its many allies. Mayan Lyson thank you so much for fighting for what is right and taking the time to come and do this AMA. It is greatly appreciated. It is believed that MM slash hedge funds are able to openly short ETFs containing GME to lower the price of GME completely out in the open for everyone to see, for no other purpose than to lower the price of GME, and nobody is there to stop this? If they have this capability, then essentially the whole market is at their control and they can and most likely do profit off this immensely. Is this not viewed as blatantly obvious market manipulation? And what can be done to stop this practice? Thanks. Very good question that I have to think about and look into more. Unfortunately, Market manipulation is all too common and too often via legal strategies or, worse, result from SEC negligence or lack of ability, i.e., not CAT, as discussed above.
the Bodhi I am Dorvalis ADHD gemstone person raising both hands in celebration this pisses me off. The world's biggest free and open market has basically no oversight that actually matters. However, why am I not surprised? I guess I always knew if I thought about it, but being involved brings a whole new level of awareness. Dorof Wiatsuki Good afternoon Mr. Kelleher, could you please outline regulations that you would like to see passed regarding short sales, specifically naked shorts, and settlement periods? I feel like being unable to account for shares in a digital market is bogus and would love to hear your opinion. I addressed some of this earlier regarding short selling. Naked short selling is already illegal, but the standard of reasonable belief to deliver de facto permits too much of it. Also, there must be much greater regulation and transparency of the securities lending and relending business, sometimes referred to as rehypothecation. There is very broad consensus that settlement should move to T plus 1 and for there to be a rigorous study of moving to less than T plus 1, which has some obvious benefits but also some valid concerns, at least at this point. Your point about a digital marketplace is on point, but there are issues with netting, which is good for all, in moving to real time and near real time that have to be thought through. Space Minion question number 1 plus N, do you believe market makers, such as Citadel and Vertu, are provided insider information or unfair market advantage as it relates to retail brokerage positions held due to buy slash sell volume provided to them which are currently not disclosed via SEC forms such as 13FS. For example, if Citadel sees the full market demand and execution of retail investors in GME, then they can determine what remaining sell volume will be needed to reduce retail investor holding. You are definitely right. No one has more info about not only where the market is at this moment, but also where it is going due to the massive amount of flow going into those HFT firms like Citadel, Virtu, etc. They have unique information from those orders slash flow and have a unique ability to exploit it. Front running is illegal, but it's incredibly difficult to prove and that is all the more so when it might be done by an algorithm. The only way for the regulators and prosecutors to determine this is for them to deconstruct the algos and source codes, that'll ensure that there is no front running, that the walls preventing conflicts and the other purported compliance mechanisms really work, or not. Moonweasel Hi Mr. Kelleher, thanks for joining us. A lot of folks here were heartened by the number of representatives willing to denounce wall st slash hedge fund greed at the last committee hearing. However there is also a widespread feeling that while their hearts are in the right place, by focusing on issues like gamification and payment for order flow, most of the reps are missing bigger issues like illegal naked shorting and blatant market manipulation via things like short ladder attacks, and the effects of things like the reasonable belief standard and weak slash inconsistent enforcement by the SEC. Do you agree with that view? And if so, do you think it is too late for a campaign to try to refocus friendly representatives on those bigger issues before the next hearing, and what would be the most convincing argument for citizens to make the case that those bigger issues should be the real focus of legislation and enforcement? I don't think it's either slash or, it's both, i.e., we have to address gamification, PFOF, etc., as well as naked short selling, manipulation, etc. Regarding representatives, you should definitely call and write them. You have a lot of power, most House members hear from very few people so if 10, 20, 30 people contact an office on an issue, it gets attention. The most attention will come if you contact the House member from your district where you live, i.e., you're a potential voter and therefore they care about you a lot. So call and write and tell them to, 1, turn up the heat on the bad guys on Wall Street, 2, stop specific issues like PFOF, conflicts of interest, etc. 3, continue to have public oversight hearings which bring attention to these issues, and, 4, put pressure on regulators like the SEC and prosecutors like the DOJ to do their jobs and actually protect retail investors and buy side. Make your voices heard in Washington as well as on Reddit. Call, write, and then call and write them again. Pallet Inspector Mr. Kelleher, we've heard your opinions on PFOF, but I want to dig a slightly deeper perspective on that question. With big market makers, i.e., Citadel, exacting a contract from retail trading platforms such as Robinhood ETL, it comes to reason that there could be a conflict of interest with their own investments, another thing you brought up in your testimony. How likely is it that orders being routed through these big market makers from retail platforms that contradict or countermand the positions of these market makers' investment arms are being weaponized in such a way as to benefit the market maker and not the customer? To clarify, there are suspicions amongst some of the more financially literate here that due to Robinhood's PFOF model, it's possible that retailer purchase orders for a stock we like are being filled off the exchange, on ODC, 
in order to alleviate the buying pressure that is driving the price upwards, which would be a net loss for firms with large short positions, and that they merely dump directed sell orders on exchanges in order to drive the price down in order to benefit themselves. Would this sort of preferential handling of order flow be one, a conflict of interest that should be regulated, and two, potentially illegal market manipulation? If so, how would you suggest this be regulated or changed in a tangible way to make the market more functional? You have identified many of the problems with fragmented markets, conflicts of interest, lack of transparency and lack of regulation or at least enforcement. I addressed most of these in an earlier response, but the key point is that these handful of HFTs are in the most privileged positions to know where the market is and where it is going. Remember that these HFT firms are also market makers on the exchanges so they are seeing virtually all the flow in the dark and lit markets and can impact the prices in both markets. It really doesn't get better than that, if you're them. If you're a retail investor or the buy side, well, not such much. Unfortunately, we are largely at their mercy, hoping they will resist the enormous temptation to use that information improperly if not illegally because there's so little regulation and oversight. The way to change it is, 1 for the SEC to get cat up and running ASAP, 2, enforce the law aggressively against firms and individuals including executives, and, 3, deconstruct the algos and source codes so we aren't in the current position of having to trust these financial firms to do the right thing and always follow the law. As we have seen in the enforcement actions against Citadel, Robinhood, and so many others, trust without verify is foolish. L. Lightbulb Mr. Kelleher First of all I want to say thank you for taking the time to speak to us today and answer our questions. I know your time is valuable and their sacrifices you make to be here are not lost on us. I want to ask about investor confidence in the US market moving forward. I, like many people here, have seen many of the shady, routine practices of Wall Street come to light in the past few weeks and have been appalled. OTC trades being used to eliminate upward buying pressure on the public exchange is one that still blows my mind. Quite frankly, it's hard to have faith in a system that seems rigged against you. What are the steps the government slash SEC can take to bring regulation slash transparency to the retail investor and help them regain confidence in the system? Is there anything we can do to garner systemic change? Or are retail investors doomed to be the resource Wall Street exploits? Retail investors can be very powerful and have influence because they are who the SEC is supposed to exist to protect. Publicly pushing the SEC, and as I said above, the Congress, can work. That's what we do at Better Markets. We exist to fight against Wall Street and big finance in the Washington policy making process and for the buy side, retail investor, main street savers slash retirees, etc. Because we are a non-profit, we can be independent and oppose slash call out the industry like Citadel or the big banks on Wall Street. You have to realize that a lot of money is won and lost long before the markets open because the Citadels of the world have already tilted the playing field to their advantage. They bend the laws, rules, and regulations to their benefit so that they are in the money before a single trade takes place. We're fighting against that so that there is a transparent, level playing field. We will try in the future to let you know when there is a specific issue before the SEC that would especially benefit from retail investors and maybe enable greater participation by you to impact what they do. We are usually being bashed by Wall Street, Big Finance, and their many allies in the media, Congress, academia and virtually everywhere else who hate being opposed and called out. We really appreciate the support.